I've never been with a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Coming out swinging with this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today you join myself, Angus, and this 69 Mercury Cougar in a cornfield in the middle of Iowa. And in said cornfield with said Angus, we're going to see if we can get said 69 Cougar to run and drive for the first time in over 20 years. Ready for this? Yes. <laughs> All right, Angus, you got us into this mess. We're near your hometown for once. What is going on today? You see, what had happened was, <laughs> I've been hanging out with Kevin. People have seen it somehow. I don't know. It's like you put it on YouTube. Anyway, a person I went to high school with reached out to me through Instagram and said, hey, I see you're doing this YouTube thing with cars. My dad has a car. Maybe you'd be interested in, in taking a look at it. And I thought, okay, what is it? And he goes, it's a 69 Cougar. And I went, yes, we'll do it. <laughs> And here we are. And here we be. And it's, it is that. Essentially, if I understand this right, he bought this in high school? Yep, he bought it towards the end of his high school career from someone he went to school with. And he drove, drove it for a few years, got married, started a family, and then the car just kind of fell on the back burner like it does sometimes. Yep. They moved out here and the car got dropped off on a trailer and here it sits. There are tags on the car. So we can give those a quick look. Those are, I can tell you right now, it's a 1986 plate, because it's blue. Oh dude, she's tagged for 92. That's 31 years since it's been legally on a road. He did say they drove it for the first couple years and then like once a year after that. Yeah. So, you know what? It is not bad in here. It, doesn't even stink that bad. Kind of an old gas smell. Oh, hang on. What are those dated for? They are dated for July of 98. Okay. Oh, that's 24 years. Yep. That's still, that's that's a little more on par. Oh, registration. Let's see if it matches the plates on the car or the plates in the seat. It's empty. <laughs> so, yes or no? <laughs> I don't know. It appears to be a upside down Hearst as is tradition <laughs> always crooked this or upside down this is definitely not the right steering wheel no nope, that is an aftermarket steering wheel but so no registration i'm gonna go off that plate since they're in the car and say 98 was probably our last year which aligned with this story a little pretty well yeah the fun part is angus <laughs> thought it sat for nine years yeah i, so I, I, I heard <laughs> 19 and my brain went yes drop the one and then we're good <laughs> So I've been telling Kevin, oh, it's only been sitting for nine years. So we walked up here like nine years, nine years, oh, 19, 20 maybe? <laughs> I brought stuff to do a nine-year revival. I don't know if I brought stuff for a 19-year revival. <laughs> ah, it'll be fine. Let's pop the hood, see what's under there. I've never worked on a Cougar. I would love to have a 68, 67, 68. Found it. Oh. oh. That's the worst position for a handle I've ever experienced. Ooh. I know what that is. That right there, you can tell it is from the way it is. Is a 351 Windsor. That's the God motor. I'm gonna say that 24 is very accurate. Look at the amount of poop just in here. Uh, radiator has none. As is tradition. Any okay, oil? I, we, dude, 24 years, this might not even spin. Oil question mark. It has it. It looks good. It is. It has been inside this whole time. It is slippery. Oh, oh she's good. It's a Ford. It's a mortal. Oh, it's super. It's building compression against me. Really? Yeah. Sand the points, this will light right off. We'll be driving this to town by the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Wheelies by midnight. <laughs> Honestly, with those tires, it, it, it looks might. like it would. <laughs> she it's, might do wheelies. It has the look of a drag car. I think it has slapper bars under the rear springs. We'll have to dig it out and see. These tires are absolutely junk, so we no, gotta do something fine. that. Ooh, I just thought of something. This will run. Yep. Easy. Neat. Go press the clutch. Oh. <laughs> Please don't be froze. This part is not as big as I thought it would be. It is not froze. Does it come back up? Sweet. Aggressively and after a sl small delay. Now, do we have brakes? It might no. be perfectly. Oh, yeah, no, that's seized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a big no. That's a big, uh, gonna break all those lines off trying to take that out, too. All right, let's get to work. We need to get this sucker running. That shouldn't take much. We need battery, we need fuel, we need spark. Check. Activate go. Uh, you got a real set of pliers? Yes, I do. Damn it. 
This is so weird. There's not a bunch of tools attached to the rest of it. <laughs> hmm. Well, if she doesn't crank great, I know where to look first. Maybe today is the day we finally do a whole revival with the pliers. I try that every episode, but I always need a screwdriver somewhere. This is not going to be the day. Give this a little clean, you know, so it gets all the amperage and burns up that ground cable. All right, well, there's that. Ooh. <laughs> There we go. That'll be safe to drive. It's like cruise control. Just always. Thankfully it's a Ford, so we can just short the solenoid. Hmm, believe it or not, I think we have a continuity issue. Weird. It's out of there, isn't it? Yep. Alright, let's see if I got a ground cable. Well, from all the leftover wire I've been carrying around for a year for some reason. A tweaker. Ta-da! <laughs> I never thought of that. Huh. We have ourselves a ground cable. Let's see if that fixes it. It's too bad in that Tang Tools portable toolkit we don't have a ratchet with a socket. Yeah, it's, it's, a, real sh <laughs> it's a real shame there isn't one in there. That'd be, that would be, take notes, Tang. Uh, I don't know, maybe they sell them on tangtoolsusa.com. Could be. People would have to go check it out for themselves to find out. I can get you another wrench, though. That'd be good. No, hang on, I gotta move all these, these damn ovals. These little cylinder things. There we go. Think this'll do her? <laughs> There we go. Oh my god, it did it. That's what we want right there. Who would have thunk? It does have one odd thunk to it and a cylinder that sounds a little different. That will probably clear out. Not too worried about it. Let's dive straight into things. I know we don't have spark and I know how to fix it because 1968 we have points. And they are going to be corroded. Right there is our points. They are corroded. So I'm just going to get some sandpaper, clean them up. And then if all of our wiring is good, we should have spark and already be able to hit this with some brake clean or fuel. And away she goes. Then here's some sandpaper. Give these guys a few swipes. A couple little scrubbies. And then most importantly, then proceed to get all that sanding dust off. You gotta get the corn out, Kevin. It's supposed to rain this afternoon, so. I'd say he's a little early, though. I don't know. That's just me. Wipe the dust off. Let's go turn the key on. Play with these a little bit and see if they got power. Oh, look at that. Eh? Eh? You can't see it. There we go. Points are working. So let's just drop this back on. Oh, hang on. I did it again. The 800th time. What's that guy? It's that little black thing right yeah, there. Yeah, I know. I know. Shit. And where did it go? That I don't know. Hey, pretty good under there, though. She's pretty solid. Actually, we should give that a little uh, little restoration there. She's a little, little crody. Fix. How's her cap look? Not any better, honestly. Allow me a minute to uh, scrape some corrosion off this. It's only been nine years. Yeah, it's just nine years. It's amazing it looks this bad for nine years. Weird. <laughs> Keys on. Distributor cap is cleaned up. Rotor's cleaned up. Points are cleaned. Let's hit it with a little fuel. Let's see if it makes... Whoa. <laughs> She's curved. <laughs> Got that performance model here. Now, that's the rare instance under high current, 12 volts will shock you in DC. If your knee is wet against the bumper, I think we need to check for spark again there. That should have done something. Here, I can just hold this. Aww. <laughs> Don't let go of the metal or it'll hurt you. I know. Oh, yep, it, yep, it has it. <laughs> Did you get got? I got got. You took that pretty well. Maybe it's weak spark. It is. <laughs> More fuel fixes that, right? What? Jesus Christ, speak of the devil. There it went. A bunch of mouse nests fell into my ear. Well, they had nine years to build it. Yeah, it's amazing how big they got it in just that little time. I would estimate this to have another 10. Crazy. Be gone. Fighting those invisible wasps again? Nah, just, just blowing stuff off. You know, these actually work great. The junkyard digs had. It's an excellent 
uh, poop remover. You can scoop it, even have a little bucket here to catch it all in, or just blow it all out of the way. Check those out, junkerdigs.com. Where were we? Oh yes, fire. Oh yeah. It's not all eight yet. It needs to clean up. Probably got some sticky rings. Maybe a less than happy valve, but I mean, come on, it's a 351 Windsor. What does it really need? Nothing. Not oil pressure. Not oil pressure, we proved that. Driving all the way across the country at five PSI. Ham. <laughs> Fish that says ham. Well, it runs. Now Go get ice cream. <laughs> Done. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's good. We know we've got a motor that will run. I think now we work on setting up a fuel system. Basically, let's make it run better. All right, it's been a minute. We've got our boat tank hooked up. We've got a random hunk of garden hose we found laying around and a water bottle in place so we can catch whatever's in the line, flush that out, make sure our pump works get some clean fuel to it and then hook the carburetor back up. Would you like to do the honors or would you like me to do the honors? Well, quick question. What are we doing? <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Bruh. <Jesus Christ. laughs> <laughs> did the thing. Take control of yourself, Andy. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> okay. God. Jesus. <laughs> Hmm, not seeing anything yet out of that pump. This is definitely not my favorite job. All right, let's switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. There we go. All right, well, we've got fuel. At this point, it should have pumped most of the crap out. Just for shits and giggles, let's hook it up to the carb and see what it does. Beer bomb? Mmm. <laughs> where's John's cone when you need it? Yeah, where's, where's the cone man of Kansas City when you need him? I don't expect this to work, but I've been surprised before. <laughs> Ow, damn, again. This one is really spicy. Oh my God. <laughs> Classic 2100, doesn't know what it wants. I was anticipating. Well, now what? Carb's leaking actively, so yep. maybe you fix it. I mean, it, <laughs> we you have are, the you technology. Are full of good ideas. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. I need to get a little better grasp on what the carburetor wants, and then we can take the carb off and go through it and get some gaskets in it so it holds fuel and maybe idles. Well, are you just going to throw that out there and not even going to ask the boss? Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> too much fuel down low. Power valve maybe? Probably power valve, yes. If I bring it up into the RPM, it smooths out and runs on eight. <clears throat> Otherwise, at idle and lower, it's choppy. So let's pull that carb off and go through it. Stinks like 
Stinks like clutch. I'm sure that'll be fine. That'll reveal itself later. Give, give it, give it. Da -da! Just like we meant to do that. Yep. All right. Let's go throw some gaskets in that and clean her out a little bit. Tell you what, Angus, it's been a good while since we last rebuilt a 2100 on the channel. Oh, hell. She ain't bad. This should be as simple as popping the float out, pulling the jets out, blowing the passages out with some brake clean, uh, popping the emulsion tubes out, cleaning those up, and just get all this gunk out of here. Because this is really actually pretty clean. But, oh, yep, you were right. Look at that. Look at that power valve. Oh, jeez. Junk. So that will probably fix our idle. We'll just clean the rest up while we're in here, regas, get the accelerator pump and stuff like that, and get this back on. Perfect. Back in a bit. Recap. Hello. Kevin, you're blocking his limelight. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Jeez. Jeez. While Kevin's working on the carb, I'm going to see if any of these tires start to take air, uh, just to see if we've got a chance in hell of rolling this thing out without swapping tires. Activate. Do. Maybe we'll check back on that in a bit. The accelerator pump's full of dead bugs. Gross. <laughs> She's definitely seen better days. Uh oh. Um, excuse me, no. Angus, it's gonna rain, we gotta get the carb in. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a speed run now, Angus. Huge lightning bolt just knocked all the damn rain out of the sky. I don't think that's how weather works. What are you doing? I don't, I know <laughs> it's, I, I, my head's wet now. All right, you win this time, Mother Nature. All right, I'll move, whatever. But I'm gonna complain the whole time. <laughs> ah! That poor bastard. Ideal time to pick up those. Nature. Uh, back to this, but now with more wet. We got our Venturi assembly out and cleaned up, as you can see. So right there, we have a crack already forming in that emulsion tube. So in time, this will need replaced, but it might work well enough today. What are you doing? <laughs> I found this vacuum, the, then I found an extension cord. You have the target dog mascot over here. <laughs> it's gonna vacuum out the engine bay. All right, well. That's an Autolite 2100 that's been thoroughly brake cleaned, wiped off, had the accelerator pump replaced, and the power valve replaced. And still has a slightly cracked emulsion tube. I'm sure that won't cause you any problems. No, I'm sure it'll run perfect now. <laughs> Let's find out. Get One, two, three. And for the decoration of our cake, there we go. Get that sucker bolted on and see how she does. She was very thirsty. It has taken a whole gallon of concentrate and a whole gallon of water. And I still don't see anything. I don't hear anything hitting the ground though. It's not that big of a radiator. Where's it going? I'm sure it'll tell us. <laughs> All right, she's bolted on. Ready for this? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> yep. So this bolt was a little stripped. Shoot. And it was a little unhappy, and it sprays all over the place. Instead of going in, it just goes that way. <laughs> There's going to be another case of every 2100 ever. It only idles on choke. <laughs> Something wet underneath the water pump. The sway bar is wet. Yep, it's actively dripping coolant from somewhere. I don't know why it will not squirt any fuel into the motor. I've never seen that. Like, no matter how hard I press it, it just flies out out here. <laughs> Something must be plugged still, even though I went through it all. <laughs> down low. 
Let's get a timing light out and see what she said at. It seems the last few times I've had issues with idle on these 2900s was actually the timing set to like negative eight every time. We'll start there. Once again, throw the auto light in the trash can and put two barrel holly on it. It'll run great. There we go. That ought to do it. Thank you, Summit in Atlanta, Georgia, for giving us a deal upon your deal at the scratch and sniff section. Probably a, a good time to mention our goals for this car. It's it's not fix the brakes, make this a road driving car, because all we would do anyway is just drive it around the yard. So we're trying to make this one easy on ourselves. The reason we're here fixing the car is because this guy's owned it for a long, long time since high school, and it's been sitting. And all of his kids have moved away, and he's got a little money to play with, and he's finally going to restore this car. So we're here helping him kick off the restoration of his 69 Cougar by getting it running and at least yard driving again so that when the time comes here soon, probably this summer, to send it off somewhere, roll it or drive it onto a trailer, it's a lot easier for him. And now, hearing it running stuff, he's got the motivation to spend a little money and put this sucker back on the road in shiny new metal and paint the way it should be. It ain't work. Well, <laughs> after that speech, <laughs> do you have a proposed solution cry it's hitting it that bad it's this is all i got i got half a thread on those this one won't even start shit aha what have we here angus circles circles but incorrect backspacing we went down to tyson's yep and picked up the cheapest five on four and a half rims and tires we could find for a trailer for a trailer <laughs> again and ironically the eagle rims do fit on the back, so we only need two. So let's get these bolted up, put the throttle up, drive this thing from its grave, and give it a bath. It definitely deserves a bath. I feel like we really just glossed over we're going to drive this car from its grave that it sat in for 20 years. Yeah, I mean, to fire right up. The magic's all gone for you, isn't it? It it's is. Just, it is. Oh, it's stand so the points sad. and then drive the car. Well, it ain't good. Not even close, dude. Did they have smaller tires there in four and a half? I don't think so. Plus they're closed now. Oh shit. Tell you what, go turn the wheels straight. 
<laughs> and maybe he'll drive straight. Oh. Oh, yeah. good. They clear? Yeah. <laughs> we'll bolt them on and figure it out as we go. How about yeah. That? Yeah. We've got our tires on. This one clears a lot better than that one. I don't know what that's about. We just won't turn. You ready to see if this sucker's gonna drive out of the grave? Sure. Where is it? It was laying right here. Well, it's probably gone to oblivion. <laughs> Neat. I've never seen so much dust come off of a car in my it's life. Violent. As soon as I touched the pedal, I was like, oh, I bet this sticks. I was like, it did, so I like smacked it to try to reset it, and it just went half. Key. There we go. Much gooder. Safety second, as in the second attempt. Yeah? I'm gonna put it in gear and start it. Here we go. Are. Like this thing is actually really solid. There's a little bit of pucker right here and a tiny bit in the inner fender wells. But other than that, Dang. real good. No clutch whatsoever. It's as expected, rusted to the flywheel. So but usually Fords have no inspection covers, so we can't get a putty knife in between them. So generally transmission has to come out. Not something we're gonna be dealing with. What we can do is wash it. Let's do that. You can see all the poop stains for 20 years and it needs a good hand scrubbing and then a repaint entirely. <laughs> but she's outside, she's cleaned, and the owner's gonna see it run and drive and back in its original color for the first time in 20 years. And that's what this is all about. I say we crawl under there and look at that clutch, see if it's a linkage that fell off or something. Yeah, it's probably not. It's probably the friction plate rusted to the flywheel, like it always is. Yeah, the fork moves. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Everything's working like it should. Which just means that since the fork presses forward on those on those springs and they pull the pressure plate away from the friction plate, 
it's coming back the friction plate is attached to the input shaft of the, of the trans and if the friction plate no matter anything putting pressure on it or not is permanently attached to the flywheel she's going to spin forever what if we put a bunch of w40 on it <laughs> what you can do is sometimes shock it by like driving it and slapping the throttle and letting off, which is kind of what I tried, but literally I shut the key off and it just rolled down this hill and kept rolling the motor. Try it a little more. There's a chance it still comes free. I it didn't like that. It loved it. Points get wet? It's angry, I know that much. I thought we got water under that distributor cap. Yeah, it was damp in here. It doesn't take a lot of moisture for that spark to just start going everywhere. Left turn, no like. Drive it. I think I do. <laughs> if it's a little finicky to start, just give it a little bit of gas, and then your key is the only thing that starts and stops you. There you gotta is, remember that. There's no brakes. Yeah, I think. Oh, he's doing it. Look at that. First time he's driven his car in 20 years. How cool is that? Just like you remember, but only worse? No, it's exactly how I remember it, except for, you, yeah, you can't shift. Well, sir, I'm glad to see you back in your car for the first time in 20 years, and hopefully this has got some motivation. You've got the time now. All the kids are gone, so it's cougar time. Wait, mm. wait, wait no. We're phrasing. Rephrasing. Uh. <laughs> it is time to fix the cougar. Is that any better? Well, Angus, after a successful day of working on this car, you can finally say you have been with the cougar. Barry, thank you very much for the opportunity. No, I... I am excited to see the progress on this car. Send me some pictures sometime. We'll put them on Instagram for these people to see or something throughout the years. It won't be sometime. When it gets all done, it'll... You'll, you'll see it. Sweet. I promise. Bring it out to a car show sometime. I would love to do that also. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on today's episode where we got Barry's 1969 Cougar out of the shed, running and driving, and him back in the seat for the first time in 20 years. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you to Angus. Thank you to these guys. Thank you to everyone that was part of it. We'll see you guys next week for another episode. Stay greasy.